You wanna get your nails done too, sis? Hey, hey, it's Shay, your millennial mom next door, who's just a little more extra, you know, cute next to gorgeous. Gorgeous is gonna, you know, devour cute. Welcome back to my channel where you will find everything, sustainable style, self-care, marriage, motherhood, bougie on a budget, travel, a little luxury every now and then. I mean, just pretty much all things black girl magic. It is my job and responsibility to inspire and motivate y'all to live a life of convenience and happiness, okay? That is my sole duty. I nominated myself. I volunteered as tribute. That's a Hunger Games reference if, if you didn't catch that. So if you're new here, that's the type of content that you can expect to see on my channel. And if you're not new here, welcome back to the Good Girl Gang. Okay, so before we get into our press on nails tutorial, you may be wondering why my makeup is done and my hair is still in this wrap. Child, I've been creating content all day. I started off you know just doing my face and then I was like doing some behind the scenes stuff where I didn't need to show my face and I never really got around to doing my hair but I'm gonna do that next I was getting ready to put on my press on nails and I was like hold up wait a minute let me stop and record this because the good girl's been in my DMs and comments for a while now pressing me for this press on nail tutorial you see what I did there y'all was pressing me for the press on tutorial <laughs> sorry <laughs> I could have been a rapper. I know. Now, usually y'all know I like to sip my wine, but it's nine o'clock in the morning, so I got my coffee, and I put a little straw in here so I don't mess up my lip gloss. Okay, so about press on nails, let me give you a little background. I was tired of being mistreated at the nail salon. I mean, I actually have several reasons, but that's like my first and most important. I feel like a lot of these nail shops are really all about getting customers in and out. They're not really focused on customer service anymore like they were back in the day. And aside from the prices continuing to rise, which is ridiculous, I mean, I know inflation is real, but they be ODing. Like, I remember when you can get a full set back in the day for $20, honey. Y'all remember them days. But aside from that, when I go into the nail salon, I don't wanna be rushed. I don't want you to put me in the chair, barely listen to me, go over all my nails really, really fast, you know, make little small talk and act like you care, but you really don't. And really just treat me like I'm another number. Like I want a real personal experience. When I'm in the big shops, I don't get that. And then when I'm like one-on-one -on -one with the nail tech, especially like, oh, I love going to black female um, nail techs who have their own small business. I love that interaction, that connection, but the good ones are always booked up. I mean, especially out here in Houston, honey. Every time I would try to get my nails done by a nail tech I really like, child, the books would be booked up for the next two, three months. I'm like, dang, I really need an appointment. Or when I did get an appointment and I need to get my nails redone, now sometimes they will give priority to returning customers, but for the most part, it's just really hard booking the good people. And I mean, rightfully so, that's why they're always booked. So the lack of customer service, the increase in pricing, and the limited availability for the good nail techs, those are all the reasons that I decided to go into press on nails. Oh, and I forgot, of course, when I started my press on nail journey and got really serious, it was at the beginning of COVID. And that was when all the nail shops were shut down and we really had no choice but to do our own hair and nails at home. So I started to get into my own routine of doing my nails and I really liked it so I just took it and ran with it. And now, I don't think I'll ever go back to a nail salon except to get my toes done because I'm not about to give myself a pedicure. That's just not my ministry and I'm okay with that. So today's press on nails are gonna come from a brand that is literally one of my favorite companies to get nails from. I'm obsessed with all of their designs. Well, first of all, let me say this. I'm not really hard to please when it comes to nail designs. I really love neutral, basic kind of nails. The most I'll do is maybe like, a little swirl of color every now and then or some Savorsi crystals, rhinestones sprinkled in like every blue moon, but it's really rare. I tend to be on the more modest side when it comes to my nails. A big part of that is because I create so much content on a regular basis that if I had like neon green, super bright yellow or red, purple, orange nails all the time, it would just clash with the looks I'd be trying to create. So. I tend to stay on the modest side, and that's just what works best for me. But if you're somebody that really loves lavish, over-the-top nails, or just different patterns and colors, then make sure you check the description box below. I'm gonna put a promo link for you all to use for this brand, you'll get $10 off your purchase. So today's press-ons are a classic French tip, which you can never go wrong with. And they're in a coffin shape, which I love. I feel like these are just very dainty and feminine. This style is just one of my go-tos. Again, you can never go wrong with the French tip. 
Now, step number one, which I started doing earlier, but I didn't finish, you need to go ahead and size out your nails if you didn't get a custom set. Now, with this particular brand, I really love them because they send a full size nail pack, meaning that you don't need to know the size of your nail bed. It's not custom. Um, you can get it custom if you want to, but I always go with this. You get two of every size. So depending on the size of your nail bed, you can have two full sets in one pack. And again, that's just gonna depend on the size. I think that my nail beds are kind of slim. I have like petite fingers. Um, so if you're somebody who has like maybe like super wide nail beds or you have like really, really tiny petite hands, you might wanna get a custom set. And most press-on nail companies will give you the option. Like you can get a sizing kit where they'll mail you out a standard pack of nails and you'll just go through and write down your size and then you'll know moving forward when you wanna place an order, what sizes to get. Because most companies will have standard sizes like small, medium, or large, and there will be different numbers that coincide with each size. But if you find that the small, medium, large sizes like don't work for you, then you can just do a custom set and just give them back the numbers that match all 10 of your nails, if that makes sense. Okay, so as you can see, I just lined up all 10 nails. And let me let y'all know something. The secret to making your press-on nails last longer is all in the application. And I'm saying this because whenever I post my press-on nails, I always get comments and DMs of people saying, I don't know how you make them last long. I tried it out for a couple of days and they pop right off or I can't get anything done with them. It's so embarrassing. I'm out and they're coming off and I'm eating at brunch, blah, 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 blah. Y'all, I'm trying to tell you it is all in the application. And I know everyone doesn't know that, but that's the point of this video to put y'all on game. All right, so let's get into our supplies. Of course, we have our press-on nails. Obviously, you need that. Next, you're gonna need a nail buffer thingy. Sorry, I don't know what it's called. Next up, you're gonna need one of those wooden sticks to push your cuticles back with. It looks like this, kind of like a really thick toothpick. You're also gonna need a nail file, some cuticle oil, some rubbing alcohol, or you can use nail polish remover, acetone, whatever floats your boat. One or two Q-tips, some cotton pads, or you can use cotton balls. Now, this is totally optional. I have an electric nail buffer and trimmer, but you don't necessarily have to have this. For me, it's just super convenient to use, but it's optional. And then lastly, you need a really good nail glue. Now, I don't like to use traditional nail glue. I like to use this gel. I'm gonna link this along with all of the supplies here in my description box for you. Okay, so remember, step one was lining up your nails in the correct size. And you don't have to do this, but it makes it easier for me to line them up in the right order too. I go from pinky to thumb on my right hand and then from thumb to pinky on my left hand. Now, step two, before you start to apply, go wash your hands. I already did that, my hands are clean, so let's move on to step three. Now, the order of this, in my opinion, doesn't really make a difference whether you're going to start buffing and filing first or pushing your cuticles back first, uh, it doesn't really matter. Now, before I started filming, I had already pushed my cuticles back, but if you don't know how to do that, all you need to do is take the flat side of your wooden stick and literally push your cuticles back one by one on every single finger. It doesn't take long. And basically what this does is shape your cuticle nicely as if you were at the nail salon. You know when they take their tool and they go around your cuticle if you're getting a full set or just a manicure and they make it nice and even? That's what this is doing. Now I also already buffed my nails but if I were to do it now I would use this small buffer or I would go in with my electronic one and all I would do is buff left to right. Now the next step is really important and this matters in the order. After you buff you're gonna go in with your nail file, or if you have the electronic buffer, you can switch out to more like rigid uh, cap thingy. And what you're gonna do is go over your nails to create some ridges in your nail bed. And it doesn't take long, you just wanna create some ridges so that when you put the glue on, it'll have something to settle into. Now, if you do skip this step, it's okay. The nail glue is still gonna stick, but I find that they last much longer when you file your nail beds and it helps for the glue to last longer. Okay, now at this point, depending on the shape of your press on nails, this is when you would go and get you a nail clipper and you could clip your nails down or clip your nails into the shape of the press on nail. So for example, if these nails were not coffin and they were like a long skinny stiletto and the sides were in like this, then I would definitely go in and cut the sides of my natural nail just to make sure that the press on nail fit perfectly and that you couldn't see my real nail on the sides. Now that's totally optional you don't have to do that but that's just something that I would do and it makes it look way better as if you got your nails done at the salon now I don't have to do that for these nails because these are just regular coffin and my nail will fit perfectly fine underneath but again make sure you trim your nails if you do have a nail shape that's gonna end up exposing your nails on the side so now that we're done prepping our nail beds the next step is gonna be to take your rubbing alcohol or your acetone nail polish remover whatever it is and you're gonna take your cotton pad and we're gonna go over our nails one by one the goal of this is to remove any type of oil from your nail beds and y'all this is extremely important please don't skip this step because this is one of the key points in making your press on nails last long trust me okay so now we are ready to apply our nails 
One more thing, y'all. I keep vitamin E oil nearby while I'm actually applying the press-on nails because sometimes when you're putting it on, the glue can kind of come out on the sides just a little bit. So I take the Q-tip and I dab it in the oil and I clean up the sides of excess glue. Now, the reason I use oil on the Q-tip and I learned this the hard way is because if you're trying to clean up that excess glue with just the Q-tip by itself or a napkin, paper towel, whatever, it's going to get very messy. The glue will actually start to trap particles from the Q-tip, the, the napkin, the paper towel, whatever you're using like the glue is very sticky and strong but if you use the oil it'll come right off so I'm gonna start with my left pinky and all I'm gonna need is one drop okay I promise y'all less is more it goes a long way and then I do one drop on the press-on nail now before I put it on I do blow the press-on nail a little bit along with my nail it's kind of like when you apply false eyelashes and you put the eyelash glue on the strip. You want to make sure you blow the band of the eyelash glue just a little bit so it'll get tacky. It's the same concept with the nail glue gel. And when you do that, just like the eyelash glue, it prevents it from being really runny and dripping everywhere. Again, you want to make sure it's a little tacky. Okay, so after I blew it for a couple of seconds, I'm going to go ahead and put it on. I'm going to press down really hard press down press down and just like I said y'all less is more you don't need a lot of nail glue because as you're pressing down the glue will then expand and kind of go all over your nail bed and then it's gonna start to seep out on the sides and that's exactly what just happened to me there's a little bit of nail glue on the left side and the crevice here so after I hold it to make sure it's on there really good you're gonna take your q-tip and just dip it a little bit in the oil and go ahead and clean up the excess glue that came out on the sides. now those are the only steps that I do to make sure that my press on nails last long as you can see the pinky nail is already on I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my nails and I'll come back and show you all my last step a few moments later okay y'all I just finished my left hand and it looks bomb take a look now before I get into my right hand let me say this make sure that when you're pressing down you're pressing very firmly and you're watching the glue kind of spread evenly it's really easy for me to do with these nails because the base is transparent but if you have a nail that has like a design or it's a solid color you can't actually see the glue underneath so just make sure that you're pressing firmly and you just want to make sure that the glue spreads and covers your nail bed because if you don't make sure the glue spreads out evenly then it's not going to dry evenly and you don't want that Okay, let me finish up with my right hand next. Okay, so I'm done with all 10 nails and they look so bomb per usual. Now the last step, well this could be two last steps depending on the shape of your nails. I like to go back in with my file and make it very, very precise. Just filing out the same shape, like these are coffins. So I'm just going over it and making it really, really nice and sharp. Because as you know, over time, just like if you were to get your nails done at the nail salon, when you're touching things and doing a lot with your hands, the shape will start to get dull. And that's why I go back and file them one by one, just to make sure the shape is nice and precise the way I like it. And if you really want to make your shape last, you should definitely file your nails at least once a week. Again, this isn't a necessary step. It's just what I like to do. It's all about personal preference. Okay, y'all. So my very last step is to go back in with my cuticle oil, just like they do at the nail salon. I don't know if you ever noticed at the end, right before you leave, they always go back over your cuticles with that little brush, and they're using oil. Now, this is to make sure that your cuticles stay moisturized, and all I do is go and I dip my little brush in, and I just go around the edges, you know, the left side of the cuticle, the right side. Hey, mama. Somebody wants to say hey to y'all. Hold on. Say hey, Gigi. You want to get your nails done too, sis? But anyway, like I was saying, I always just make sure I go around my cuticles with the oil and moisturize them really nicely as if I was at the nail salon. Rub it in really good. Oh, don't fall, sis. And then lastly, please make sure you do not wash your hands or put your hands in water. Don't do the dishes. Don't grab something that has water on it. Don't put your nails in water for at least, I would say, two hours. The reason for that is because you want to make sure that your glue has time to really settle in and bond between the press-on nail and your nail bed. So if you wash your hands too soon or do the dishes or something, it's going to interrupt that process of the glue settling in, and we don't want that. Do we, Gigi? We don't want that. Okay, so I'm going on each finger and rubbing in the oil on my cuticles. Keep it nice and moisturized. And that's about it. I told y'all, it's not a long process. It really takes me like less than 10 minutes to do this because I do it so often. Now, the burning question that everyone always asks me is, how long do your press-on nails last? Now for me, because I do this routine faithfully, I never skip a step, my press-on nails always last at least two and a half to three weeks. I know that sounds crazy, but I promise y'all, if you do these steps, they're going to last. Now let me also say this. I'm not a person that uses my hands for like manual labor like I'm not 
lifting up a bunch of stuff all day. The most wear and tear my nails will get is when I'm like opening up Amazon packages, which is pretty much every day, but I'm just extra careful when I'm opening the boxes. So if you're someone who is doing like a lot of manual labor, if you're always banging your nails somehow, or I don't know, maybe you're clumsy or something, maybe they won't last for two and a half to three weeks, but for me, they definitely do. Now, because I'm a content creator, I switch my nails up pretty often, so I usually don't keep them on more than like two weeks. And that's another reason why I like to wear press on nails because I change my mind a lot. <coughs> oh, you good, sis? You all right? <laughs> you all right. I like to change up my press on nails a lot. Um, I don't like to stick to one design. I mean, I know I'm a minimalist when it comes to nails, but you know, you can play around with your neutral nails and do different things and have different designs that are still clean and neutral looking. So I change my press on nails like every one, maybe two weeks at the most. You were being so fidgety today. What's going on? You good? You ready to go take a nap? All right, I gotta get out of here, y'all. But again, I'm gonna link all the things that I used today in the description box. And remember, I'm also gonna leave a promo link for you to get $10 off your press on nail purchase with this particular brand that I absolutely love. I swear by them, most of my nails do come from them. And then lastly, make sure you drop a comment and let me know what questions you have. I tried to go over every step pretty thoroughly and detailed, but just in case I missed something, please drop a comment and let me know. Again, thank you. Oh, bless you. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. And remember, you can be anything you want in this world, child. Just don't be a hater. Say bye. <laughs>